Welcome to implementing a build manager in ADA presentation. Why a new build manager when there are already exist several solutions? I'm using Jenkins for more than 8 years now with more than 30 projects and several build nodes. Jenkins is really nice and powerful but it is slow and it needs a lot of memory. More annoying is the fact that it requires uh, Java on build nodes uh, the Java Virtual Machine must also be quite recent and up-to-date with the Jenkins server. Jenkins suffers from several security vulnerabilities, which means that you uh, have to update your server regularly. I decided it was time for me to get rid of Jenkins and write a build manager fully in ADA. Th the main requirement is uh, security and performance. Let's build a safe design in ADA. Uh, I need a command line interface because that's easier for me to control and build engine. But I also need some web interface that I can look at on my desktop and mobile phone. Uh, I like a good, nice interface. Um, I need a flexible architecture for build nodes to be able to use SSH, Docker, VRSH so that I can start and stop a, a, a container or a virtual machine. Uh, what a build manager must know? Um, well, uh, a, a lot of things really. Uh, it needs to know the list of projects with their source control methods. It must know the receipts to build the project. The receipt defines the steps that the build manager must perform to build the project. All the steps there can be several receipts for the same project. The project has some dependencies that you want to track. This is useful to trigger or build or another project when the project is changed. The build manager must know a list of build nodes with different systems, different architectures. Then we have the build information to track the build results. Each build also contains some metrics. The build manager must connect to build nodes so that it needs the credentials. It also needs some API secret keys when you want to publish the build results. And you have more secret keys if you want to sign a build. What a build manager must do? Uh, again, a lot of things. First, it must probe the source repository for changes to trigger builds. Then it must schedule builds when changes are detected. It has a build queue. From the build queue, it must launch a build and execute build steps described in the receipt. It can launch them locally or remotely. While executing the build steps, it must control and track the execution. It also collects and builds re the results with logs, collects uh, build metrics, code coverage, unit test execution. It must publish the build results whether the build failed or not. Of course, it must send build notifications. And well, uh, it's always nice to have uh, reports on the projects. What a build manager must uh, protect? A build manager has access to um, sensitive data. Uh, first, there is a source code if you run uh, proprietary projects. Often you may uh, uh, use um, API secret keys to use various external services. The API secret keys must be protected. The build manager has access to various credentials, either to get the source to connect or to build the node. Sometimes you have to sign the build uh, result and this is in general protected by a secret key or a password. Finally, uh, you have the build results and the build logs. You must not leak some API secret key through a build log because that build log is uh, published uh, somewhere. Let's have a look at some numbers. First word about the cost. I was able to write this project in a reasonable short of time, le less than 30 weekends on my free time. Uh, the project is written mostly in ADA with some uh, HTML and uh, a little bit of uh, TypeScript. TypeScript is used um, on the web interface. 
The project has uh, 32,000 lines of uh, ADA code. H half of it uh, is uh, generated code. There are 43 ADA packages and 30 ADA private uh, packages. The database um, uh, contains uh, 19 tables. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, architecture. The project has two binaries, uh, a web server binary and a command line uh, b binary. Both are written in ADA. The web server is built on top of ADA web application and ADA web uh, server. The Porion command line uh, utility is built on top of the ADA database objects library. The command line will connect to build nodes and to run the build receipts. On the file system, we will see a config, TMP, logs, and project directory. An SQLite database contains information to about uh, project, receipts, builds, and so on. For the secret and sensitive information, uh, I'm using the ADA key store, which uses several encryption keys. The key store is locked either by your user password or by your GPG key, and the project sources are extracted in the project uh, directory. Uh, here is a detailed view of the Porion command line tool. So it runs on Unix or BSD systems and uses S SQLite for the database. Uh, we could easily switch to MySQL or PostgreSQL, but SQLite is uh, easier to configure and set up. The tool is built on top of several ADA libraries. One of them, uh, most of them are part of the ADA web application framework. Uh, the Porion lib block is uh, shared between the command line and the Porion web server. On top of that, we have uh, the set of commands provided by uh, the tool. You see on the picture the two generation tools that uh, generate a big part of the ADA code. Uh, Dynamo generates the uh, support to access database tables in ADA and the Advanced Resource Embedder generates ADA helper packages. The server architecture is almost similar. It uses the uh, ADA web uh, server within the ADA web uh, application so that we can benefit from uh, application permission layer provided by uh, AWA. And we use the uh, same Porion library and Samsung specific web access operation. The same ADA code uh, generation tools uh, are, are used. Let's have a look at the UML to ADA code uh, generation. I have described the database model in UML. There are 19 tables organized in five packages. For the UML, I've used Argo UML, which is an old uh, Java tool. It was migrated from Tegris.org to GitHub. It's still maintained. Argo UML works well to define the UML class model. Um, Dynamo reads the uh, Argo UML file and it generates the uh, ADA packages from the UML classes. Quick overview of um, Dynamo that I've presented three years ago. Uh, so you write your design using UML class uh, diagram, but you can also describe it by using YAML model or XML model. The Dynamo tool reads those files and it generates documentation, ADA packages and SQL files. The code generation works for the free database Postgres, MySQL and SQLite. And now to access the database you only ha need to, um, to use the generated ADA packages and write your um, application. Dynamo generates 14,000 lines of ADA codes um, in six ADA packages. Uh, it's one more package from the UML model because I have an XML file that contains a series of SQL queries that I want to map in ADA. All this handles SQL insert, update, delete and of course um, SQL queries. Uh, when you do a select uh, to retrieve a list of data, this is put in an ad ADA containers uh, vectors. This is part of the uh, generated code. Uh, other objects of the model uh, are using reference counting, so there is nothing to do to uh, manage uh, memory. Uh, let's have a quick look at the UML model in uh, Argo UML. We have 
um, a set of packages. The name of the project is Porion. The root package is Porion. And we have child packages where we could put different uh, models. Uh, the project uh, package contains a model which describes the project itself. So we will see the uh, class diagram. Here we have a project um, class which has a table stereotype. Um, in this table we have several attributes. Um, some of these attributes have, are marked by some stereotypes and the stereotypes in fact help the dynamo code generator to drive the generation. So table is a main stereotype, PK is a stereotype to identify a primary key and auditable is a stereotype to help um, to instruct the code generator to generate uh, audit. So each time the uh, name record is modified we will track changes in the uh, database. Um, we also have um, project dependencies uh, with a, a dependency uh, table and we have some relations uh, in that table uh, with other tables. So w let's have a look at other... Uh, I cannot see everything, so but uh, the here we will see the build receipt and here the result, the database table to hold the build uh, result. Uh, here we can see the how we store the uh, unit tests which are executed and identified and here we have the build metrics which are collected by uh, the system. Here we have the uh, build nodes, uh, representation and so on. Everything is written in UML and it helps in the uh, code generation. Let's look at the benefit of using UML. When I started the project, I've not made a UML database model that was correct at the first time. I've made uh, several iterations. You add new tables, new relations, new attributes. Then it becomes too complex and uh, I move tables in another packages. Code generation is fast and it's um, easy to change the uh, UML model and to rebuild the ADA code. The good thing is that um, a change in the UML model can break the ADA compilation, but you can detect issues quickly because this breaks the compilation. You only have to fix it and it's done, uh, almost. Last point is that it keeps the consistency between the ADA generated code and the SQL database, which is good. Well, refactoring in ADA is really safe and um, when it compiles again, you are pretty sure and confident that uh, it will work. Let's have a look at the build queue scheduler. The build queue contains a list of receipts that must be um, executed on the build nodes the role of the scheduler is to keep that list um, receipt uh, ordered, but we want to minimize the number of builds and take into account uh, project dependencies. We have a set of four projects. Project B and D depends on project A. Project C uh, depends on project B. The build queue contains receipt for project A, then C, and then D. If we add B, at the end of the queue, after the we, we build B, this will trigger again the receipt C, which is not good. The build scheduler will reorganize the queue to avoid that. Uh, we still build A, but now the receipt C is put at the end, after B. The first step to do this is to load the build queue in an ADA vector. There is a queue's vector declaration, some variables for the query definition. We set up the filter on the query to only get the receipts of the current uh, build node and we only need to call the list uh, procedure. Now we have our receipts A, C, D in the vector. 
Um, we define a comparison function between uh, two Q entries. Uh, its job is to decide whether the left element must be executed before the right element. I will not show the body of that method because it is too complex for this presentation. With our comparison function, we just instantiate the generic sorting package and we have the sort queue package that we can use. Now we only have to append our new receipt to the current list and call the sort procedure. And now we have a list which is sorted on the uh, build execution order. We just have to iterate over it, set up the order member in the database and save the entry. Let's look at uh, another problem. How can we configure the database on a fresh installation? The idea is to embed the SQL schema in the binary. The SQL schema is generated by Dynamo in a plain text file and this is useful when you have to create a database uh, manually. Um, having a plain text file is not easy to use. Instead, it would be nice to have an array of strings with uh, each string being an SQL statement that um, create a, a single table. Uh, that's the purpose of um, advanced resource um, embedder. Uh, it will do the job for us. Uh, it generates 2000 lines of codes in three ADA packages. Let's have a look at this second uh, code generator. So the goal of R is to embed the various files or contents in the binary. Uh, we have a set of configuration, help files, web files, or whatever we want to put in the binary. We define a set of rules. The goal is to tell R how to manage those files, integrate them, and make them make their access available in free programming languages, C, Ada, and Go. The tool reads the files and generates some C, Ada, and Go source. The generated source becomes part of the compilation of the final program, and then it contains um, the files. R generates simple ADA code, at least uh, far more simple than Dynamo. It can generate uh, ADA types, but for Porion, I've preferred to define the type uh, myself in a parent package. The Porion resource package uh, defines the content array and content access types. This is the way we will represent the, our array of strings. Then R generates the Porion resource schema package and it has only one function, getContent. The body of the package contains the static read-only strings that represent the SQL schema. Well, writing a build manager is not easy. Um, we have many information to take care of, many operations to perform. A secure build manager is even harder because we have uh, all the security aspects. Storing and keeping sensitive information is not an issue with AIDA key store, but um, using uh, that in a build receipts is uh, more complex. AIDA really helps, but uh, I will always find that uh, you must think a lot more about your design um, on how you organize your package and types. If I compare with other languages like uh, Java, the design phase is longer. Uh, it's not a matter of knowing the language or not, it's a matter of specific or more constraint rules that you have in ADA, like, uh, no, like uh, no circular dependencies or forward type uh, declarations. Code generation was key for this project for me. There is a database layer that is now fully mapped in ADA with generated code. Um, and there is there is a R embedder which simplifies the instantiation the installation of Porion. The Ada database layer was the key to simplify the project. This helps to implement complex algorithm. I described only a um, short algorithm, but the library contains several others which are interesting. This project is new. It lacks many features if you compare with um, other build managers, but uh, ADA allows to uh, implement quickly complex features, and I will not stop there. 
thank you for listening. Thank you for my wife who allows me to record this presentation. Uh, it's a fun project. Um, you are welcome to use it. You are welcome to contribute. Uh, you have the source. And uh, if you want, please uh, submit a pull request. Thank you. And we are live with Stéphane Carré. We have only three and a half minutes for a lot of questions. So let's please be quick. Okay. After that, people can join us in the live stream. The first question from Fernando is that you mentioned you migrated from another system, namely Jenkins, because you wanted a lighter one among other goals. Yes, uh, I, there, I had two two goals, a, a light system and uh, avoid the dependency of Java on build nodes. So today I don't depend on Java on build nodes and light system because um, Jenkins is, is running on my server and it's using uh, more than one gigabyte of memory. And now the server is using around uh, 50 megabytes of memory, which is a lot less in fact. Uh, it, it's huge. Uh, now, also in terms of performance, in terms of web performance, uh, I have seen uh, uh, web requests are really, really faster in uh, in Ada compared to uh, Java, in fact. And this is a big win for me. So mission accomplished. Yes. What about BSD systems? That's the second question. Have you tried them? Have you made okay, so, needed uh, to make uh, any BSD? changes? On BSD, uh, I am building Porion on uh, NetBSD uh, with the latest uh, compiler that uh, Fernando uh, has uh, updated uh, and it works. So, in fact, the EDA util library um, has been ported on various systems um, on NetBSD, FreeBSD, uh, Windows, and I rely on it for some specific operations that are required to, uh, for example, uh, launch a process, um, get the output of a process and run uh, external things, ex external API. Uh, these operations are not uh, standardized by uh, ADA, in fact. So I'm using ADA utility library, which uh, integrates all this and has been ported on various systems, in fact. All right. So you didn't have to make a lot of changes to Porion itself? No, no, uh, no. Mission accomplished again. Yes. What happens about the database schema in case you need to migrate to a new schema? Um, OK, uh, in general, uh, I never modify the uh, SQL schema. I always modify the UML model. And because the code generator generates a new schema, um, for now, Dynamo does not generate a migration uh, schema. Uh, it does not uh, generate uh, migration uh, queries. So I have to do it by hand. But uh, by looking at the, sch the previous schema and the new schema, it's quite easy to, uh, uh, to know what the columns are missing and table are missing and so on. So this is done by hand. Okay, and last question, is the generated code high quality? Do you like it? It generates ADA, so yes, it is. <laughs> That's all the time we have. But we'll still wait for another minute or two. If it